Uh, I'm really excited to be doing this. Um, my first ever solo exhibition was with the band in 2019, and it was also this vibe of like an artist tour, but it was definitely less people. So I'm really excited that you guys are all here with me today to talk about the journey of the work. multidisciplinary artist. I've been making work since I moved to Canada in 2015. I graduated from OCAD in 2021 with a major in drawing and painting and a minor in creative writing. Um, and recently I've been exploring painting and different mixed media such as screen printing, textiles, and hopefully sculpture too. Um, so we're going to start the tour. This project started off as a school project at OCAD where my teacher told us to make art on home and to me when I thought, thought about home I thought of my mom doing my hair because that was always a thing like the night before school on Sunday you would all like because I have two sisters so I always wanted to go last and I remember my mom always braiding her hair and she would have like the dags or the blue magic everything like laid out or we would just bring it down and lay everything out and so I wanted to create a collage of those hair products and at the same time during that time I was also doing hair for people in my community like doing like full locks and braids learning how to do my own hair as well because hair here is learning how to pay for hair is expensive and I don't have it like that to be paid to do like hair with like $200. So you just learn how to do your own hair and then eventually your friends come to you and eventually you meet different people and that kind of fostered a community around me. And then, so after I did the project, I around the same time I met um, Karen and we were supposed to do a show together at, at band and she saw the piece and she was like, this is really unique, this is really cool. What is this? What do you know, explore this more. And the more I started digging deep into it, the more I, I became more interested in, like, just how, like, when people talk about hair, they normally talk about the hairstyle, but they don't really talk about the, the products that they use. And I feel like the products are so important because the products make or break, like, the, ind the individual. Like, you can buy a product and it works for you and it's great, but also you could buy a product and you could have horror stories about the product, but you still have history and memory attached to it. And, and it's beautiful because even at the, the night of the opening, a lot of people were able to have conversations just based off of seeing the product. Whether they used it or not, people were able to have a conversation in the gallery space. And I think having that safe space to just talk and like connect to people you don't even know because you have similar experiences with Barbicide or Blue Magic, I just think it's so beautiful so that's kind of like the origin story of how everything started and like now it's become even deeper for me where i'm trying to explore different things like the ingredients and like who makes these products but right now i'm trying to celebrate the fact that we have re we have claimed these products as our own even though we didn't make them and i grew up in nigeria and in Nigeria, we tend to look at the West as like, oh my God, these guys are doing it right. They're, they know what they're doing. So I grew up seeing these products as well in my home. And a lot of people that, a lot of black people globally, because we're everywhere, have those similar experiences. So it's also like, what are the odds that we have these products that we didn't necessarily make, but we've now like almost attached to, to us. Like we can smell it, we see it, we, we have like a memory about it. Um, so yeah so the first one I did was this one here um, and I originally didn't plan on actually doing anything to the background it actually happened after I finished the painting and I or originally was inspired by like uh, different colors of coral coral reefs I don't know if it's coral reefs and I wanted to just, you know, apply that into looking like, almost like scales, like the water, and I was inspired by that, and I, that's why I used different shades of blue, like ultramarine blue, and turquoise, and yellow, but I wanted to join the yellow because it was already such a yellow, 
orange based painting and i just thought bringing in the yellow to the background would also add some sort of depth into like making it look like scales so it was inspired by like the water and scales and coral coral reefs and then when i did this one i started thinking of um head wraps and like headdresses and i went into the library and i was looking into more textile based arts from like west africa and north africa specifically mali and nigeria and it was inspired by different fabrics like ankara fabrics and so for this one i kind of did a different approach and i tried making it look like i got like a, a lino like a print making block and I wanted to do like lino cutting, but because I have no experience with printmaking whatsoever and I just like to experiment by myself, <laughs> it didn't turn out exactly how I wanted it to turn out the first couple of times when I tried it on paper. But then I started just, I just went for it, even though like it didn't look exactly how I wanted it to look like. And I ended up really liking it. So this is what it originally looks like. And then I tied in again different colors from the original collage to the background to complement each other and using oil pastels just went around that and then <laughs> for the dax one same thing but this one was mostly inspired by west african textiles and west african fabrics again specifically the ankara fabric and i also noticed that i made the stencil for this one with like cardboard paper and it wasn't perfect again like I, I love that like not perfect look because even back home when you see a piece of fabric it's manual right it's handmade it's not made in uh, a machine is not making it so people are hand stamping it. and sometimes it's not straight sometimes it's a little tilted sometimes it's a little like sideways and that's kind of what happened while I was you know printing it like because I did it like stamping it like on and on and on and on and then I kind of just got lost in the process because it's very meditative and I didn't really think about if it's straight or not. I just wanted it to be on the canvas. Um, you can see that I've even gone over some of it here because some of it did look a bit messy, but I still like how you can kind of see in the background, like seeping through. This is a stencil. This was yeah. the first stencil I did yeah. when I was still at OCAD and I honestly wanted it to be way longer. I wanted it to be like a but you know your ideas don't always go exactly how you want them to go but i made the stencil same way with cardboard and i remember <laughs> just always doing what i i was like oh, i want to make this but i don't want to go buy anything so i like working with what i have and then i made the stencil and then i wanted to use different colors but this hair comb is is a classic nigerian uh comb called ilaru and it's basically a three mouth comb like we say and it's used to parts like your hair or it make, just makes your parts cleaner it's made out of wood and i wanted to complement those earth tones using like orange and brown and the yellow it, it just speaks to my soul really but it also showed me that i could you know deepen my practice with um, painting in a different way outside of you know blending or whatever like making my own stencil and then stamping it on i would really love to see this on like a larger piece of canvas so use this as like a background for a hair product so like imagine something like on top of this i just feel like this really sparks that like ah in my brain of like okay we can do this we can do this yes i like to again because i start with with the collage digitally so whatever complements the combs the best most of them are from my childhood i like drawing from my experiences when it comes to like hair products or hair combs but mostly like the black one there actually all the hair combs there remind me of my childhood so i wanted to also incorporate that into the paintings as well not just you know my background but products i have i have actually used growing up um and then bringing in other archival products that i've heard about or i've read about or i've watched uh documentaries about so it's kind of also playing with like that idea of like i still feel like back home we look to the west to to decide what's good and like what's what's good basically like what's like ideal like what's the standard and for me not knowing about certain products i think that's the only black owned product actually made by someone who was black that's in this whole exhibition so it's also highlighting how 
you know, all these products were using them, but we didn't actually make them. They're owned by a lot of white or, you know, Jewish corporations. And Madam C.J. Walker is like someone who created her own products and she made it for us. So tying that and tying in products that I use growing up as well just reminds me that like we are able to create things for ourselves and we shouldn't just stop at consuming but creating and some of them are still around like dax and even um there's another one um like the optimum this relaxer one here optimum smooth soft chain carson relaxer still exists barbicide and clipperside are still here they're here to stay forever um, but stuff like the magnificent compound conditioner discontinued afro grow discontinued um blue magic still exists but the the it's so interesting how the packaging is now all plastic and i i'm like i don't know i guess production costs whatever but i found that like as the years progressed to like the packaging it's it was either glass or like in tin cans now it's like all plastic and that that for me takes away like the magic a little bit of like intentionally designing a product to market to people but it's not just about like marketing to people it's like the craft behind like each bottle even is like arts within itself so painting those ones are always more exciting than painting just like the plastic one no shade to plastic but it's just like you see how it like to me it's like ah, it's, it's focused more now on like money and less on like design and like aesthetics and i think that is also really important as well it has a role to play in, in everything these products uh, we have kind of reclaimed them and i wanted to touch on like blue magic and uh carefree curl because those two products are very familiar from my childhood growing up and I didn't want it to feel so disconnected from me. So when I first did this one, it was kind of like an aha moment of where I wanted the show to go. And you can see that so, so many similar colors are used throughout the exhibition. I've been making collages since I was really young. That was like one of my first introduction to art. So when I was making this composition, I normally always start with one, taking a photo of the product. If I don't have the product, I will initially look for it online or luckily for me, I was able to find a beauty supply store that still exists in Toronto. It's a bath assembler. It's called Golden Beauty West Indian Beauty Supply Store. And <laughs> the owner allowed me to come into her space where she sells a bunch of hair products that are literally archival. It's like walking into a museum. I'm not even joking all these products that you see here were at her store and she allowed me to take photos of them so i documented them taking pictures of them and then i used uh procreate on my ipad to create the collage first and then i projected the image onto the canvas and then i painted onto it and this piece was inspired by hair salons back home that have like they're very like eclectic to me because they just they use what they have and then they create these posters that draw you into the shop or into the store and they're normally just they pop they're literally like mini pop-ups everywhere so i wanted to pay homage to that by recreating my own brand of like these hair products i again wanted to highlight more products used in the barber shop because most of the paintings that i do are more like products that women use and I didn't want it to only end at like the hair salon but I also wanted to touch on the barbershop because I know for a lot of men the barbershop is like a safe space where you can go get your hair done talk to people connect it's, it's a communal space like these are communal spaces but for me researching hairstyles you come across very similar like generic hairstyles and I really wanted to highlight the unique the uniqueness of our hair texture and how we're able to manipulate it in so many different ways. I look like I, I want people to be able to read the text on the bottles because it's it's crazy how marketing works and for some of these products we see that like they're trying to like tell us that our own hair texture is not enough even though we know like that's your natural hair that's how you're born but Throughout like my research, I found that some of the texts on these products are actually very jarring. Like some of them literally will tell you like straighter is better, but it's like your hair is not straight. But then you're using the products in hopes that your hair does get straight because straighter is supposed to be better. But 
it's also playing with like the marketing and like the marketing of like our insecurities and I, I don't really want to highlight that. I want to celebrate um, the texture and the uniqueness and just the boldness that we have when it comes to expressing ourselves. It's, it's interesting because at first you see it and it's like, oh my God, I used this growing up as a kid. But for me, like that's how it started. But then because of my lifestyle too, I'm very like big on holistic health and wellness. Like if you know me, you know that like I'm a naturopath at heart. So even having some of these products at home and looking at the ingredients and like formaldehyde, like formaldehyde is something they used to preserve dead bodies, but in some of these ingredients, it's in the hair products. So it's like, why is that in a hair product? Like how, how does that connection happen? That's still something I am, you know, exploring in my work and I hope to explore deeper because it's like you see it at the, on the surface and it's like, oh, it's so pretty, it's so shiny, just like in the store, it's like, oh my God. And then you look at the back and it's like, oh, this is not good for, me, for your hair. Like the soft sheen, like the relaxer, now there's a whole thing going on with hair relaxers and how it's causing ovarian cancer for a lot of black women and a lot of companies are being sued right now like I recently just found this out because I'm doing my little research you know it's, I'm, it's still a work in progress and learning about hair relaxers and how there's so many chemicals in it that are actually detrimental like they're damaging our bodies but because of beauty and aesthetics and the societal pressures that have been pushed on us we think we need them when we really don't like Really do. I'm not even trying to sound preachy right now, but it's like you, you're you're beautiful just the way you are. But also, there's a beautiful thing about adopting things when you you have, that was all you had, and like now looking back and seeing that like oh wow, yes, I have this memory to this, but also it's not always good. Like my mom didn't let us relax our hair at all. I remember growing up wanting to relax my hair, wanting to relax my hair. My mom she relaxed her hair, and her hair literally got damaged from hair relaxer and she didn't make any of She's like, when you're 18, you can decide. When you're 18, you can decide. And then I turned 18 and it's like, I didn't really care for hair relaxer. And then now people are you know, going to the more natural movement and they are cutting their hair, they're embracing their curls. And I think it's important to also just accept who you are regardless of whatever, the products don't make you, you. It's you who makes you, you. It's, it's just accept, it's about acceptance. So, so tying it back to like, um, barbershop tools um, same with like um, the one love hair salon that was the first painting I did that had like a tool that is used in a barbershop like the shaver and also just highlighting that like these products are used as cleaning products I it, it, like to disinfect uh, the, the, the hair tools in hair salons they're not actually used as like the other products are used like directly on the scalp or on, on your hair it's to disinfect um the shaver yeah so i found that i found that interesting i wanted to really tie in more of what goes on in the barbershop as well into the paintings and that's why i also put them complementary to the two men's hairstyles as well to see someone like highlight like a product that's essential and like actually takes yeah. care of like it's like an actual product that will take care of you more so than like the sporting <laughs> waves that has the products that make your hair fall. Like this will actually help people. So it's like to very nice touch. Thank you for sharing. Thumbs up for the research. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Shout out to Weston, uh, Maryland's beauty supply store at Weston, and also um, Lloyd's Barbershop on Bathurst and Boyd. Because those people were really helped me with my research. Again, like I couldn't have done any of the like any of these projects without actually putting myself in these spaces. I didn't think it made sense to just make the work without interacting with the people there. Especially when my studio was at Winston, I definitely, I was able to talk to more people and just see like how, just being in those spaces, it's, it's, a, it's a space where you can just be free and talk. I remember this one guy, he was cutting here and he's like, don't take a picture of me. My wife doesn't know I work in a, in a barber shop. He thinks I'm working construction. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> So this was definitely inspired by, again, Golden Beauty, uh, West Indian Beauty Supply Store on Bathurst and Bloor. Um, and that's where I got most of my reference photos from uh, because it's a beauty supply store that's been around since the 70s. So it has a very rich culture in Toronto history. And I wanted to highlight 
like almost like a shelf section at golden beauty but instead of having the same products kind of just have one of each individual product and use like certain colors to complement each other like the pink and the red or the brown and like the peach cream pinkish <laughs> color um, and the background too um, I wanted it to be blue at first because another painting that I had done also had a blue background and I thought it looked nice but because of the clash of different colors it didn't really translate the way I wanted it to translate but I still wanted that design at the back to, to like come forward so I used the lime green like wash and I, I used a bigger brush so you could see like the brush strokes to add like more texture into um, the background which kind of speaks to like the texture of like our hair when you think about it like how we have different textures and like how we can do different things with different styles of our hair whether it's straight whether it's braids whether it's locks like it's very versatile um yeah i also wanted it to look like people i don't i know it's very it's a very like weird um analogy but like i feel like with the other products it feels very like singular whereas like this when i finished it it kind of felt intimidating because i felt like they were staring at me and it just felt like they were people so almost like making it look like I'm taking a photo of individual individual like faces together but they're actually hair products so they're not actually people they're like <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense but all the details are real like the price the the phone number the name of the the uh, the beauty supply store it was important to me to keep those things because those those that's like the reference to um, where I, I found these products because you can't find most of them and even doing research like online so many of them do not exist online like it's crazy you I even search for like the companies that made them either the companies don't exist anymore or they are officially just they shut them down for whatever reason but that would be a different <laughs> that's gonna be a different research you know so it, it's it's so cool they're like archival capturing like the archivalness of them in that way that is like here like we're here <laughs>